Hello, thank you for joining us here. We are about to do the, e the EVs teardown. Yeah, an EVs <laughs> yeah. Sherman S teardown with Albert. You may re remember him from some of our previous videos, such as our Commander review and uh, yeah. Abrams. Abrams review, yeah, it was Abrams a while ago. Review. Yeah, And Master, I think. And Master, and some of uh, Jack's Electric Dreams videos. Yep. Anyways, uh, follow through. We're going to go through some things that we think could be improved. We're also going to send all this feedback to Lieber Kim. Hopefully, they make some changes on the actual production model. But uh, let's dive in. So you just removed the the handle. The handle to start. There's a bit of wear. There is a little bit of wear there, as you can see. And then this. And this, this piece is what allows the mechanism to kind of lock into uh, close yes. and open positions. That makes sense. Yeah. I'll do some wear on that as well already. That might be from insulation though. It looks like a screw missed uh, a yeah. hole. Ah, uh, exactly what it looks like. So you were saying about these Phillips head screw just earlier that you wish they weren't Phillips because they strip a little bit easier? Yeah, Phillips tend to strip a little bit easier, especially because there's so many, like number one, number two, number three, and it's, uh, some people may or may not use the right ones or the right screw heads, which kind of allow it to strip. Uh, whereas for the hex bolts, you either have the right size or you don't, unless you're shoving Imperial into metric. Right. But that's a whole different story. By the way, if anyone's wondering, we are filming from our new repair center location. So there's no gasket. No gasket. No gasket. Okay, that is good to know. It looks really easy to add your own silicone, but I'm gonna definitely tell Lieber Kim to. But it's probably not something you want to silicone every time you want to do a motor change or tire change. And in order to do a motor change and a tire change, you need to take this off. Because you got to, unless there's another cable, we, yeah, if you can find, we'll out, find out later. We'll find out later. Yeah, yeah there's, the, there's the control board. There is the control board. Doesn't look like the photos. So they went, they Renders. went uh, almost similar to the Gotway method, where previously they had each charge port have its own wiring to the control board. Right. Uh, but now Bagode and Leaper Kim, it seems, has changed to mounting them on a control board and just having the one wire mm. do the charge port. So it doesn't matter which one you plug or how you plug them. At the end of the day, they go through the same cables. And they're using these uh, Leaper Kim branded connectors, which is kind of interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. You got that? Yeah. You need that to de-energize it. That's just to suck the rest of the power out? Correct, to drain the capacitors. Yeah. So there's no charge in them. Yeah, it's interesting they use these connectors. Can't see how many MOSFETs they use. Hidden down there. Is it, it's a dual layer controller? Dual layer, yeah. Yeah. They're all following the in motion way. Yeah. It's more compact that way. Uh, better packing factor. And it looks like there is a, uh, a very thin heat sink at the bottom there. Which heat sink? Is that a heat sink right down there? No, uh, they might have just done the aluminum bonded method, which is the way that the Master and Master Pro and T4s are all doing it now. Okay. Um, and that's also why they have unbelievable cooling, because previously they used to mount the MOSFETs directly onto the frame or onto the um, plastic or whatever it was, um, and then have a heat sink that pulls out from the side. Uh, but now they actually bond the aluminum, the control board onto aluminum plate, and that aluminum plate is bonded to the, or screwed on, mounted onto the um, frame, okay. uh, which allows it to cool a lot more efficiently because you have a bigger surface area. Right. Cool. It's still a daughter board too, a separate daughter board. Separate daughter board? Oh yeah, yeah, look at that, right there. I don't know how I feel about these connectors. Yeah, we're wondering if they had a mount uh, buzzer previously mounted there. And, and then maybe realized it wasn't loud enough. And then so they mounted it under. Over there, see it right yeah, the back. And that white thing. There we are. Yeah, there you go. Cool, I didn't know that was there. But that's uh, why it's quite loud. I could hear it no problem. That's also the way the uh, the new Bigodes have been doing it too. Ever since the EX20. 
Oh no, the EX20 is still not, but the um, Master Master Pro T4. Yeah. They're all mounted behind the headlight. All the gunk on the floor is from the Abrams. <laughs> oh, the Abrams goo. The goo. We're going through changing all the motors, remounting tires and all of them um, for our Neon November sale, which is happening right now, by the way. Huge discounts on the Abrams Commander. So this is the kickstand, uh, similar to how the Bagode had at the back. The difference being that the Bagode, they mounted on the rear frame. So yeah. the Master, I think, has two screws on each side, all on the rear frame. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, they mount all the way to the front. And still two screws, but at least they're spread apart, so you have a bit more force. Yeah. Uh, I think I think they kind of designed this in a way where if you got into an accident going down, let's say a ledge, and you weren't going fast enough, um, I believe that this should be your sacrificial lamb. Ah, uh, yes. Where this would break, and you just replace this plastic piece, which is a good thought. Yeah, it's quite a good kickstand. One of the best kickstands I've ever used. Yeah. Yeah, and it works quite well. Except it marks your case. The magnesium alloy case. I'll put it on the other side. This one I kind of rubbed off already. Yeah, it is marked up a little bit here too. Not a biggie though, because it'll just cover it up anyway. But the only thing I kind of didn't like was the fact that there's cables down here, and this is to connect the two batteries in series. Oh yeah. Uh, it is covered oh, by plastic. Oh, it's covered by that. Okay. And it looks like it has also has a clear plastic wrap over the. Case. Yeah, I'm just worried about damage, like if you hit a rock really hard. Right. Yeah. But only time will tell. Yeah. Now are these just for show? Yes. Yeah, people were thinking those are bolts. I saw no. like there's a yeah. post. There's a post on online. Like there's so many damn bolts you need, but that's just for aesthetics, folks. <laughs> Not to worry. I commented on that post. I think you I did. Said, yeah. Yeah. I said it was just aesthetic. I can't keep up with all the online posts. But it's uh. Is that five mil? Oh, it is. So they're all five mil hexes. Which is nice. There you are. They look different, but they're five, all five mil so far. Except for the, actually the ones at the bottom here are four mil. Four mil, okay. Yeah. It's a lot of screws though. Yeah. You have to remove these too. Maybe, let's see. Or not. Hey. One piece. Don't care for those wires. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. there you go. Yeah, it's it different needs angle. to be pivoted. <laughs> so, yeah, the pedals are mounted on the uh, battery casing, which, which is, is a very. It's really tough. It is really but, tough. It is a magnesium yeah. alloy, I think they said it was. Yeah, and Jack tested the strength by ham trying to hammer it, apparently. Oh, yeah. And then he said it held up pretty dang well. The only concern I had was the fact that they did magnesium alloy, but then they ended up doing plastic shells here. On the inside, OK. And then they are Phillips screws again. So are you OK if I open this? I think we should, yeah. I'm kind of curious. Yeah. Before he opens that, I'll just let everybody check out this beefy fast A suspension. Looks like that is the axle as well. You have to remove this. Well, to uh, find we're going to remove it later to find out what's yeah. behind there, but uh, it looks beefy. Silicone. So that is silicone. Gasket as well? And a gasket? No, it's just silicone. silicone. It's just okay. silicone. All silicone. Well, that's. Somewhat promising that the battery is pretty sealed. I mean, there's, but their silicon job is droppings yeah. quite uh, yeah. leaves much to be desired. I was riding in the rain with this thing, and it's it's seems pretty clean, seems dry and clean yeah. inside. So I won't I won't bother taking it out. That's good to see. Yeah, I don't think there much more needs to. Be Surprised they didn't put any foam. Oh, they put foam on this side. Yeah, there's foam underneath. Uh, yeah. There's no foams on the sides, sides. now, okay. just underneath. Yeah. Okay, so as you took the other panel off, this thing is just sitting up top like that. So the design is kind of similar to the Abrams in a way. Um, they still have the plastic mudguard with the plastic U-frame. I mean, 
going to flex over time. Yeah. Um, the suspension posts are mounted to the motor axle, but they're using the battery pack, the controller, and the other battery pack to create that U-frame. Right. So you have the structural rigidity. Uh, if you look at the Abrams over here as a contrast, sim similar concept. They have this uh, plastic U in the middle for the mudguard, mm -hmm. uh, but all the structural rigidity comes from these roll bars as well as these structural elements down here. Which anyone that's ridden their Abrams for a lot, you'll realize they'll get some flex in that over time, which is just how the Abrams is, but it is what it is. We can just remove one side. And yeah, we'll let's see. do it. Yeah, we'll just okay. see what's underneath there. I know the people want to see know. it, and we got to please the people. I'll do it from this side then. <laughs> Right, Coda. Gotta please the people. Do we, do we gotta please them? <laughs> oh, it's four bolt. Okay. That's promising. Let's put this aside so I don't lose it. I feel like the, just the motor design is kind of sexy. It is, but it's just a cover. <laughs> yeah, the, their fender. But I think it's, a, it's the innards that are important. It's a three mil? You get three, three mil. mil? Take out that plastic piece. So this that holds the suspension in place is just made of plastic. Well, I mean, this doesn't hold it. It doesn't hold it though. See? No, like, no, no. Like this is free moving. The only thing holding is down oh, there. Oh, okay, I see. That's the only piece that's connected to the suspension rod. Yeah, it's not even touching. It's not touching, and you can see it can flex. Gotcha. Yeah. So the only thing is like these, was it six or eight screws? These eight screws eight mount screws, to the battery yeah. pack. Right. Two. Get to remove the mid middle ones? Yeah. yeah. Two more, was that a five mil? Yeah, I think they're five mils. Yeah. Oh, there's four of them. I mean, to, to change the tire, you'd have to remove all this. It's a big job to change a tire. Yeah, it's not as easy as uh, I was thinking it was gonna be. No. There you go, there's your... Okay. That's the axle. That's the axle. It's beefy. Wow. And the... I mean, the bearing is the bearing well is sealed. Under there, completely yeah. sealed. Complete. Very cool, and that's not a hollow bore. So... It's, a, it, it's like a two inch. Interesting. You got my... I've never seen anything. Inch and a half. Inch and a half, okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, that looks promising, that looks pretty sturdy. How far do you want to go? I don't know, how far do you think the people want to go? They're going to want to see us remove the cover. <laughs> so to answer your question, yeah. the motor cable, there is no excess extra disconnect. No, so you have to get into the controller. So you have to get into the controller to remove it. And then you got to run it through this fender, which means that I got to take this whole fender apart. Oh, I see where it is. So you have to take off both suspension. No, you don't to have to take off this suspension. To change. No, you didn't change both. No, because I got to remove the motor cable because yeah. the motor goes down into here, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I gotta, and then that's all silicon sealed. Oh, this is rubber grommet, which is good. That's good. You guys see that? It's a rubber grommet down there. Okay, that's good. So they rubber grommet it, and then they. Uh, With other than the lack of silicone sealing the controller, it looks decently watertight. I mean, yeah. they had they had their average silicone job here. That was a very poor silicone job. But. Like, if you look at the cover, you can see how like, yeah, how, how many gaps are missing here. Yeah. Yeah. They could have done but a better not job. Not hard for anyone to go in there and fix it themselves. Yeah. Um, it'd be nice for it to be a gasket, just so you can we do need to take it well, out. I think I think uh, again, this is a theory, but the one of the old Sherman used to have a gasket around the uh, cover. Yeah. Or around the battery shells when you put the shells on. And what happens is if people don't line them up properly or they get uh, stretched yeah. and expanded, they could become useless anyways. Yeah. So I think probably they realize that because the gaskets they use are very, very small. Unless they use like a couple mils thick rubber gasket that can keep its shape really well, but then you need a really big channel to fit it. Right. Um, I think for them, they kind of just have to weigh out the pros and cons of replacing the batteries. Yeah, that's all plastic. 
Yeah, because you probably won't be replacing batteries. No, on. no, that's, it's something that last longest, one of the longest lasting parts of an EUC, I'd say. And yeah. so it should be. Well, the only <laughs> thing is if you're to get into an accident and you need to replace the shell, like if you crack the magnesium shell, yeah, then that would be of concern. Yeah. Um, because that depends on how well you do the job. I noticed that there's some rubbing here. So that's quite worn down. Oh, yeah. From very minor usage. Even this plastic, I think, is kind of worn down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of rubbed. Is that from the suspension bouncing? Yeah, from the suspension okay. moving. Yeah, look at still that. see them on both sides. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that'll cause any issues, but that's good to know. I'll well, any friction is bad friction. So. Yeah, I'll point that out. To, I mean, uh, Lydia was watching our live video. Oh, really? <laughs> the live review, yeah, from veterans. So they are paying attention to us, and hopefully yeah, like, they listen. You can see that's straight up friction grinding marks, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is all small stuff. Like, they could easily clean this up in uh, manufacturing. Yeah. So it's not too much of a concern. And it could be already being fixed. Or it could in be the, fixed in already, the production yeah. model, but uh, we'll see. Let's continue taking apart this motor for the people. For the people. <laughs> Give them what they want. By the people. For the people. I guess I should probably remove this control board. It's dangling there. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it dangling here. Three mil. My least favorite part of the, <laughs> just the, such a dinky tail light. Tail light. Lasers are pretty cool, but like you, we talked about in our Oh, this review, is the button for the lasers? It's a really crappy button, and then yeah. one laser is weaker than the other. Mm. Um, maybe it's just we've got a bad one, but. I mean, it's hard to be. Like I said, we'll get picky customers that would want to return their Sherman S because of that, so <laughs> we'll need to make sure. To be honest, though, it's going to be really hard to get them exactly the same all the time because of manufacturing. Yeah, and also like maybe there's just the power going to them is uneven or who knows, but. Yeah, there's a lot of factors. It's just, yeah. it's one of those things that's going to be really difficult to nail 100%. There you go. There we go. Just had to come straight out. Oh, they added some silicone. Oh, and there is some silicone. There, there you go. Silicone. Yeah, silicone. There's the other side, motor cable. Cool. Those are coming off pretty nice. The fun part is still to come. It looks like it's coming. Sorry. No worries. Just trying to be very careful. Do you want me to pry this one? Sure. Be ready because the oh, typically it pops. There you go. <laughs> Opa! Hey, look, those bearings look thick. Yeah, it looks like That's a nice a bearing. Thick boy. That looks like a really good bearing. Whoa. And it's like protected by being inside the motor. Well, they're typically like that. It's just that yeah. they, when they do the motor manufacturing, this cover usually isn't not there, not here. Yeah. Uh, but they're usually sunk in similar to this. Yeah. 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 They did goop it a little bit. Yeah, there's a little grease blue, in there. Blue grease. And motor looks almost kind of tiny. Clean. <laughs> what was that? It looks really clean. Yeah. Well, there you go, folks. The axle the people want. looks beefy. Very cool. It was quite nice. Yeah. Not picture. much to say, really. It uh, mm -hmm. speaks for itself. And then, yeah. I just don't know what this cable is here for. I guess I should have opened the other side. That's okay. Cool. Yeah, they put some sort of plastic here, too. I'm kind oh. of tempted to open the other side. Oh, interesting. Think we should do it? Yeah, why not? Might as well. We're already here, right? Might as well open the other side. Let's show people everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just sending you found videos yeah. uh, or pictures. Yeah. And Doug mentioned that uh, because there's no, it's similar to the V11 where if the water went in, uh, there's no way for it to exit out this way. Right. So the only way to go in is through to the motor. Right. So there's pros and cons to everything you do. Yeah. 
Is that? Sorry? Is that rubber? It is rubber. Yeah, it's rubber. Oh. That could help water not get in, maybe? I mean, it depends on how well of a seal, but yeah. it's, there's quite a lot of movement, yeah. so. So we're gonna put this side on in hopes that it stops the other side from. Oh, because I'm gonna screw it to the thing. Yeah. So the, there's only two options. One is I apply the other side and it pulls the whole hub through with the whole thing, or this can help keep it there and then I can pull off the other side. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We will try to show you the other side. Oh, I was saying that the, uh, the feedback I'd probably give veteran uh, is like we, we our goal today was just to disassemble and to kind of understand the wheel. Yeah. Um, it may or may not be the most efficient way to remove the tire from the body, uh, but maybe finding a way or maybe coming out with a video showing us the quickest way to do it. Uh, because if you had to go through all of that just to change your tire, that would be a big pain in the ass. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess we can put so it back together. We will give them that feedback. I don't know if we'll change that, but uh, we'll see what they listen to. You know, there might be, there might be a secret. Like little things like there, there, there might, might be a secret way that yeah. like they know what is the best. You know, and I'm just kind of I see a screw, I remove a screw. So yeah. um, definitely, the way I did it is not the most efficient way. So as we're kind of wrapping up here, I don't think we talked about this on video, but these teeth here. So you see these teeth here, uh, this is what creates the ratchet. And if you tighten or loosen the screw, this should be the spring. So how strong or how weak you want it to be. Yeah. But as it, if you, if you just zoom into here, as I move the pedal, you can see how it kind of goes in and comes out. Yeah. And that's what creates that clicking sound. Uh, but if you can see what used to be black is now silver. It's gonna wear over time. So this is only what, four days of use? Yeah. And it's not even a daily wheel at this point, I'm guessing, right? It is for me, but it... Oh, you have been daily? Every day, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is, this is four days of use. Uh, there's no sand or dirt in there yet, which will only accelerate those problems. Um, but seemingly, you could remove these four screws and replace it, perhaps. Yeah. So... And do we want to show quickly how these move up and down? Because we didn't talk about that in our yeah, so video. Yeah, so these uh, are held in by these two Phillips screws, which I'm not sure why they would... Put it on the front. Oh yeah. Because then you're stepping on yeah, it. Yeah, it would all day reduce long. the friction of the. It would reduce pedals. the friction of this because it's yeah. sticking up, right? Like if you if you feel it, it's just above the height of yeah. the uh, of the little nibs. Yeah. So, and the other thing too, because they're Phillips, and you're gonna step on them if you ever step in mud, those ah, Phillips gonna are gonna get grimed up, and then how well you can remove them is another story. Right. Um, I can remove a pedal. So the pedals. Let me just grab a screwdriver, because I think this kind of interesting. So they're designed, sure. They're decent pedals. I, I'm impressed. I hope those teeth last, like you kind of pointed out. So they're decent pedals, but you have to remember that these are going to fall prey to the same problem of the S22, where because they're proprietary, uh, less, it, it'll take more development effort for someone to come out with pedals. And make their own custom ones. And make their own custom ones, and they got to justify it. Whereas with the Bagode system that the Abrams had or the old Sherman had, because it's so commonwealth, uh, people can make pedals and they can justify that R&D cost and the manufacturing cost. With this, I'm not sure if this is the same as an S22 or not, but it might also end up being something that you have to wait a little bit longer to get a set of custom pedals for. Right. Uh, the only thing with these, so these, you unscrew those, loosen okay. them, yeah. and you can pull them out. But if you look carefully, uh, there's a groove in here. So, is it okay? Oh, yeah, not in focus. Uh, there we go. Yep. So nice there's a slight go. flat groove there in the center there. You see that? Yeah. So when you put these pedals in, you don't want to have them too far out because then you'll fall the risk of them sliding out or coming out. But if I put the, if I superimpose the pedals, that is technically the maximum you can bring it out. So right. you're not even being able to bring it out that much. Like you're talking about less than a centimeter. Yeah. So it, it's it, cool in concept, but I think in reality, it won't be that. Do you big find of a deal. Uh, like bigger pedals are better for you, or do you get more control of it? I mean, I have like, big feet, so I have like yeah. size 12, 12 and a half. Yeah, so I wear for 12 me, too. it's <laughs> the bigger the pedal, the more surface area, the more torque I can apply to a, a wheel. Yeah. Um, I ride with kids, and my girlfriend has also smaller feet. So for them, they don't care as much. Yeah. Because uh, we have a rider, he's I think 10 or 11, named Maddie, and he can put his foot anywhere, and there's room all over the pedal for him to place his feet. Yeah. So I think it, it really comes down to personal how, how big your feet are. But of course, the more contact and service area you have with the pedal, 
uh, the less you'll jump off the pedal and the more torque you can apply to the pedal. Yeah, that makes sense. So, um, yeah, I think final thoughts is, would just be the, I think that my main concern right now that's kind of overlooking everything else is the tire changeability. Yeah. Um, especially since the community has been asking for a quick tire change option, uh, which is why the S22 was re redesigned to be able to allow that. Um, yeah, again, if Veteran can come out with a, a tutorial showing us the quickest way to do it. Yeah, there could it, be an easier way. We there could know. be an easier yeah. way, yeah. So they can come out with a video showing us that easier way, and it's maybe a 20, 25 minutes for you to pull the motor out. That'd be great. Otherwise, it looks like it might take a while. Yeah. Um, Overall, build looks really good. Um, I guess we'll have to look forward to the stress test tomorrow. Yeah, let's do it. Looking forward to yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for joining us for the teardown. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, no uh, problem. Albert. Um, pray for us that we get it back together. <laughs> All good. Yeah. And I mean, well, it looks like a Leaper Kim assembly room already. So, I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, in the right pretty spot. Pretty much. <laughs> um, make sure you do like and subscribe. We are releasing another video, a stress test video we're filming tomorrow. That'll probably be released over the weekend. Hopefully this teardown is happening the same day. You're watching it as we're probably stress testing, yeah. I assume, with Ryan, uh, a.k.a. Ginger on Wheels. And we look forward to it. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you.